Welcome back to our British Institute channel. Today, let's start with learning how to make this beautiful dress that you see here. It's a deep plunging yoke blouse, as you have seen, and we use the princess that got that technique to do this. So, this has a beautiful piping that you see here, which was achieved with bias, and then it is a lace up princess that was their blouse it also has this beautiful drape that we see here so it's loaded with lots of sewing technique this is something you would like to learn kindly stay tuned to the end of this tutorial thank you okay, so for this tutorial i already have my body strap set i'm working with a princess that was the as you can see here and if you don't know how to draft this i already have the tutorial on the channel so in order for this video not to be unnecessarily long i already did that off camera so now the first thing i'm going to be doing is to make this into a basque a basque posture okay it's just a regular waistline as you can see so to increase this to a basque the next thing we need to determine is how deep you want the v to be so as you can see it's a really deep v so I'm just going to try to measure to my first my hip line. Okay, hip line I'm working with is 26 inches. You may not get to your hip line, it may be more than your hip line. You just work with whatever it is that you want to work with. So, this is 26 inches here. I'm going to note that. Okay, so you can just measure seven to nine inches from your waistline, depending on how tall the person is. So, you can see that I have eight inches here. Okay. So now, after making that, I'm going to try to get a straight line there so that I can extend my that. So after getting this straight line, the next thing I'm going to do now is to extend the that leg to that point. Okay. So you are not concerned with the your waist your waist measure your hip measurement because. It's going to just come from here. It's not going to affect any side measurements that you have. So this is what I have. So all of this now is part of my dart. So to make this easy for me, I will need to close this bus dart. And to close the bus dart, I will need to open one of my darts here so that I can also close it for me to be able to draw out my back effect. So I'm just... cut off this that so that i can close this up okay so i've just cut this out so that i'll have something smaller to work with and as you can see i'm going to be closing my that so that i can separate it so one of the reasons it's important for you to work with a princess that but see when you're working with designs that has so many style lines is because with a princess that you can see how the dust just goes it doesn't interfere with the neckline or the usually the places that you want to add some design to so it's very very comfortable assuming you're working with a with a straight that now a shoulder that will be concerned with how the that is going to go and now it's going to interfere with the designs that we want to form but with a princess that it just goes on its own so the major difference that we want to do now is is going to be on the center front area and as you can see our dart is not going to interfere with that but so that i can draw out my back effect i'm just going to cut off these pieces so that i can bring this part closer for me to draw out that shape so to do that like i said i'm going to open one of the darts here or you can just completely cut it off so after opening the dart I'm going to transfer my boss dart to the waistline. So opening it up now, I can easily close this up and then transfer the dart. Okay, so that's what I have. I'm just going to cut this completely, or if you can, you just place your your dart like this. But you can as well cut it up so that you don't rip your paper apart. Okay, so now this is what I have. This is my first pattern. This is my second pattern. Now I'm going to close this as well, making sure that my waistline and my underbust line are line as you have seen. And after closing it up from my waistline, I'm going to draw my basque shape. 
so your bust can actually be a sharp V or a bit curved just like I'm using the curved side of my ruler to draw mine like this so now from my waistline I'm going to draw it like this and then I can now cut that half okay Okay, so now my bath effect is done. Now I can cut off all the excess that that I have there. So, like I said, you're going to be doing a lot of work on because this has a yoke. So to create our yoke, we're going just going to be working on the on the center front. This is the center front. This is the side. Front and this is the center front which is why I've chosen this type of dance because it's not going to really give me too much work so to create this yoke now is a very deep V yoke you need to determine first how deep you want it to be for me it can be on your waistline but I think I'm just going to make mine a little below my waistline okay so now from the upper part here I'm going to measure let me clear this table a bit okay so like I said, this is my waistline, so you can just go a little below your waistline. My waist is 18 inches, so you can just go like 1 or 2 inches below my waistline. Just so to have a really deep V yoke. So, I think I'm just going to go 2 inches below the waistline, and that leaves me at 20 inches. The next thing now is to determine how open. Remember, it's a net that is there. So, depending on the cleavage that you want to show, you have to be mindful. I'm going to be deciding that using my chest line. This is my chest line, which also doubles as my arm o line. Okay? So, this is the chest line. This is the bust point this is the under bust and this is the waistline okay so now this is my chest line and i'm going to be using that as my guide so remember this is just a half scale of the front which means if i measure two inches there by the time i open it up it's going to open by four inches so if you measure two and a half inches by the time you open it up it's going to be open by five inches so depending on the amount of cleavage you're willing to show like i said so i think i'm just going to leave it at two inches so that by the time I sew it, I'll be left with four inches or two and a half inches. Okay, because I don't want to expose too much. Okay, so I just have it there. So now from there, I'm going to connect it to the depth of my yoke. Just like this. Okay. So now after connecting to the depth of my yoke, the next thing is to determine how deep I want it to be on my hand hole area also so from my shoulder point I'm just going to measure three and a half inches there and then I'm going to take my curved driller and then connect everything together so I'm trying to find a really nice curve so that I'm not going to be having any funny shape there so once you have that you make your curve you can see how nice and smooth we have that so now this is going to be my yoke and I'm going to cut that out now. So for the back, the back is actually very simple. I already drafted the back panel as well. You can just leave it bare, or you can also make it in form of a yoke. It's totally up to you and the design you're aiming to, to get. The major thing is the front, okay? So this is part of the center front. This is the side front, and this is our yoke. So this is the pattern that we have now. So like I said, I'm going to bring in the back now. Okay, so this is the back. Like I said, you can just leave it bare like this. And you can make it have a yoke as well. So if you wanted to have a yoke, you can just cut any neckline of your choice. It can be your regular V neckline, your regular neckline, or you can just make it a V-shaped neckline. And then you're going to, to make your yoke. So I'm just going to maintain this this chest line if i want to hide a yoke and then this upper part is just going to be my yoke so i'm going to pass it out like this and for the neckline i think i'm just going to work with the v neckline so for the dart i'm not opening the dart up i'm just going to close the dart so that i can just have one single piece there so it's simpler that way so this is my back and then for the neckline like i said you can just make it a V neckline so from my neck point there I'm just going to connect it like this so basically it doesn't have any shape you're following 
you just need to work with whatever neckline shape that you want to work with okay so this is my yoke for the back and this is the yoke for the front so for the front yoke i'm going to measure a neckline a neck depth of three inches or three and a half not so high it's not so low so three and a half inches there but again it all depends on what you want and i'm going to connect this and also cut that out so i'll go ahead and cut all of this on my fabric i'm using a net fabric for the yoke and i'm going to use a plain polish cotton for the for the other parts of the front you can also use a velvet okay i'll cut them and bring it back to show us what we have Okay, so I'm gonna have to cut out these patterns on my fabric now. This is the center front, the side front, and then I had the allowances when necessary. This is the yoke for the front, and this is the yoke for the back. So now for the center front, you can actually cut it on hold, but because this is a very deep V, especially for beginners, I'm trying to make this beginner friendly as possible. You can see that I separated them and did not cut them on fold because it may be a bit challenging to hard the yoke because it's a very dv yoke it's maybe a bit challenging and because of all the lesson that is going to go on there it's maybe a challenge for you to sew so it's very easy for you to sew it when you have them separate like this that's if you don't mind having a center line seam on your center front so i don't mind that that's why i have it like that i already have a tutorial now you can join very deep v yoke using this method on the channel so now the next thing is for us to start sewing them together so if we look at the thumbnail very well you will see that the center front part area is laced so i have this akara strap so i just cut out a fabric of one inch and then i just fold them on each other and sew so that i can have a long strap like this for my my loops okay so i'm going to before i remove my pattern i'm going to decide where i'm going to be placing my loop so the loop is going to start from my from my chest line area as you can see here so i'm just going to mark that as well on my fabric okay so i'm going to start it there and it's going to stop where the dv yoke stops which is here so you need to mark the intervals that your loop is going to have you can have one, one inch interval or one and a half inches can even be closer so i think let me just work with one one inches so i'm just marking an inch interval all around like that and i may need to notch that part so that i'll see it easily when i get to my sewing machine and i want to sew this okay so marking that now i have about 12 loops okay if that's too much for you you can reduce it i mean decide to reduce it when i'm fixing it but that is what i have for now so i'm just going to pick them up now you can notch them a bit or you just notch the first part the first point which is this so when you are sewing it since it's just one one inch interval you just use your tape root to measure and then you fix the loop so i'm notching this part and where it's going to end as well okay so now that i have this this also have a piping okay like a bias this is optional but if you want to fix it you can fix it as well so if you want to go if you're going to be fixing a bias piping to this that's the first thing you're going to sew so i have my bias strip here i'm just to open it up and then close it like this so after closing it you're going to place it along where you want it to go through and then you're going to sew it down like this okay so that by the time you sew in your lining so you can see i'm placing it this open end is going to be towards your inner part so that by the time you turn it with lining it's going to go inward and then the piping is just going to show, show on the tip like this so wherever i want it to pass through i'm going to go ahead to the sewing machine now and then place my bias and sew it then we'll bring it back to show us how we're going to create the loops okay so i've gone ahead to sew in my bias as you can see so by the time you turn it it's going to be piped neatly like this so this is what we have the next thing is to bring in your rope and you start creating the loop on that line you can see my same line i use a black thread so now you create your loops and then sew it on that same line like that with one one inch interval so this is the loops that i created you can see them 
like this so by the time i turn it out like this it's going to be neatly finished as well my lips will come and then my piping is just going to show like that so now after doing that the next thing is for you to sew your sides together so i'm going to join the side front to the center front before i join my yoke okay so i've gone ahead to join them and you can see our cup area is looking really beautiful so if you want to pad this you can go ahead and cut your wording and then use it to pad it so this is what we have so far the next thing is to bring in our yoke and then i'm going to sew in the yoke at the main point so like i said i have a detailed tutorial on how to sew a yoke for a very deep plunging neckline on the channel so if you don't know how to kindly check that tutorial out so i'm going to place this in between now and sew the yoke to it okay so they are sewn together now you can see that our yoke is inserted and is really sharp you can see that this is where i joined it so you just need to press open your seams so at this point the drip that you have on the chest line area if you want it inserted as well you're just going to insert it before you turn with your yoke but i'm just going to place mine after sewing everything up so this is what i have so far and i'm satisfied with what i have so now to cover this hub i have my lining cut out the same way i cut my main fabric and then i'm going to sew it so in that video i was talking about there is a video of how you can line your plunging neckline as well so if you don't know how to you can check it out but what i'm just going to do is to just use this lining to cover up with these rough edges so i'm just going to place it like this so it and so that i can flip it over so same way i've also gone ahead to join my back yoke to my front yoke you can see what i have here so these are my two yokes so after turning with lining what i'm going to do is just to sew it on the shoulder and also on the side seam and then we're going to work on the drip okay so i've gone ahead to line it you can see how neat it is this is the wrong side and this is the right side where we have our loop so i also joined it on the shoulder like i said and then i sew the side seam together with my seam allowance so now the next thing i'm going to do now is to cut out my basic sleeve which i have done and then i'm going to fix the basic sleeve to the handle before we do the draping okay so now i'll fix the sleeve as you can see so the last thing to do now is the drip like i was saying you can insert it inside your dart line just like you have it here or you can drape it like i want to do so i have this piece of fabric here i've turned them against each other and the width that i'm working with is around 10 inches you can do more so now these 10 inches now like i said i've turned them against each other with the same fabric so 10 inches by the length that you need but i just made it's 10 inches by 22 inches so by the time i drip it and i have excess i'm going to cut it off so now this 10 inches i'm going to gather it or place it a bit to so around five inches so this is where i want to add it i'm going to add it from the third loop here okay and by the way i've cut out a long group like as you have seen and then i used it to lace the loop that i have here so now on the last one i'm just going to fold it inward like this and then tack it down so you do that by the time you are doing your fitting so that it's not going to be too tight on your client so once you ensure that it's fitted you're going to tack it here and tack it here and if you want it tight you just make your rope longer so here now i'm going to gather this and then i'm going to flip it like this so that it's going to be neat so after flipping it i'm going to place it here and sew it down so after sewing it down now it's not less for you to take it to your client's body on, on the mannequin then you take it to the back so that i can attach it on the back okay so now i'm going to be taking this to the sewing machine now to sew it then i'll take it to the mannequin to drape it so that i can see how it fits so i have two of it one for this side and one for the other side okay so like i was saying it is sewn now i just sew it in a way that the rough edges will be inwards okay so you can see the rough edges facing inwards like this and after sewing it like i said you can use the mannequin like this or you do drip it on your clients directly so you drip it to the back and when you get to the back you can see i'm just holding with the pin you can tack it here or even around the zipper allowance anywhere you want to tack it so this is the other side as you are saying this is your zipper allowance you 
okay so this is what it looks like now our drip is done so like i said the lacing as well when you lace it from the lower part upwards like this if you want to tie it you just make your rope longer but i don't want to tie this so once you see that it's fitted on your clients like this and then you readjust it very well the excess that you have here you can just fold it in like this and then you tack it down on the other side as well you fold in the excess that you may have and you tack it down so you're not going to see anything again so you just need to add your skirt to the basque part and your beautiful dress will be ready i hope you enjoyed making this beautiful tutorial with me if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like comment and subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next one bye